everyone, Simon here. Episode 3, Season 2, Jib, Vampire. Quick recap, we left Jib talking to the Elders at a party. Thai lady and husband, husband, not sure. Lek, who owns this beautiful big house in the middle of nowhere. They're at this party, sat at a table, two elders and Jib. And Jib's trying to find out what the new business is all about and the elders start to talk to her and tell her about the business. They go through the details with her and tell her the ins and outs, what she'll be doing and some of the money she'll be earning. I'll explain it a bit later to you, the ins and outs. The elders have told Jib to get a car and get an assistant. Jib says to the elders at this point, all I'm doing at the moment is spending money. I'm in Bangkok, I've got a condo, renting, it's all costing me money. Um, I don't drive, I've never driven, don't know anything about cars. And it sounds expensive to get a car, um, but I'm not earning apart from the gold. I'm sending backwards and forwards. And the elders have a quick mumble together and they say, okay, <clears throat> understand, that's fair. Comment. We'll sort a new car out for you and you can pay us back over time, bit by bit. Um, I mean, it's going to be a few million bucks. Just, okay, and they say, you must find an assistant, get a foreigner, and don't get involved <coughs> with this foreigner. So now Jib's beginning to understand the business, potentially earning a lot of money. Now she knows why she's got to dress up, move herself up in the social society. Looking at Lex's house, oh, Lex must be worth a fortune. Anyway. They finish on drink, the food, back into the house, have a chat with Leg. Time to go. It's also time for the elders and the tribe to go back to the UK. So Jib and the elders into the limousine that's waiting. The Mercedes S Class. Oh, luxury. Back to Bangkok. The elders, um, the next day, sort the car out so they've ordered brand new honda accord top of the range black of course got to have that mafia godfather feeling at a local honda dealer and they let jib have all the details be about um, a week cost just shy of three million baht for the top of the range one got everything and they order it and they've paid for it, just like that. The elders must have loads of money. Still don't know why they're based in the UK in the cafe. They order the car, sort all that out. Jib, we're off, they're heading back to the UK. Fine. Back in the UK, two things happening. Peter, Jib's first Farang husband, daughter Pla. Um, Pla's got a bit of a virus. Peter takes her to the doctors. She has blood tests and all the bits and pieces. A few days later, Peter rings the doctors for the tests, results. All okay, it is just a virus. But he finds out in that phone call, Pla's blood type. Now, Peter gives blood every month as a blood donor. Um, and it turns out her blood type is different. That doesn't necessarily mean he's not the father. But over the next few days, he starts thinking about that and thinking, should he have got a DNA test? Should he get a DNA test? And figure that out. He decides not to. He thinks, doesn't matter, whatever. She's my daughter. I love her. And he never gets that DNA test. And to this day, 
never has. He will never know where the plier is his daughter. 100%. But it doesn't matter. John, lawyer. He's on the phone to John a few times. Getting more information. This lawyer's got the, he's got the bit between his teeth. He obviously had a bad experience with a Thai person. John's mother passed away, and the sister as well. Um, and the mother's bank, it's the same bank as John's. Naturally, they closed the bank accounts and everything down and settled probate. The lawyer's onto the bank and he says that the account's closed but he wants all the information, he wants every single piece of detail of what happened from the time Jib was in relationship with John, moving forward, everything. The banker a bit reluctant, he's a lawyer, the account's closed down, the lawyer points out that John has got £530,000 in the same bank in an account minus the cost of a PlayStation or PS4 or uh, Xbox, whatever it is, PS5 and puts a little bit of pressure on the bank and the bank eventually yeah, there's no problem for them, he's a lawyer, it's all above board agree to give him all the information and John starts giving the lawyer a little bit more information a bit more detail what jobs she was doing uh, but wasn't sure of her income etc that would be the next thing the lawyer needs to find out is Jibs obviously had English bank account is on the hunt so things are moving there John's not bothered he's got 530,000 in the bank but that lawyer really is wanting to find out what's going on Back in Bangkok, Jib gets a phone call. The elders have gone back to the UK. Jib gets a phone call from one of the girls in a go-go bar. She put the feelers out for trying to find a foreigner. She was after an American. 2535, as instructed by the elders. A girl rings her, says that uh, there's a German gentleman who's been coming into a bar at the back of Pat Pong um, and is giving the indications that he's looking for work and wants to stay in Thailand and that he's a nice guy uh, quite large physically uh, athletic now Jib has offered these girls if they can find the right guys for her that she would backhand them so that's why the phone call Chip says, right, okay, arrange, get hold of this guy um, for the later in the evening. Come back, confirm to me. I'll meet you in Pat Pong at this place. I'll sort you out some money and I'll go for a meal with the guy and just tell him he's meeting a potential employer. So, this girl, go, go, girl, I think, maybe a beer bar girl. Rings later on, all set. German guy is called Junga and uh, off goes Jib meets at the designated place slips the girl a couple of thousand baht this guy yeah tall he's like, like the Terminator he's quite well built and athletic Jib's thinking very nice but cannot get involved anyway pleasantries Let's go for a meal, takes him along the road to a nice Thai restaurant, spends a couple of hours chatting to him, getting to know him. He'd done some teaching in northern Thailand, somewhere near Chiang Mai. He, uh, so typical of many foreigners, his relationship, marriage, whatever, back home had broken, found Thailand, fallen in love with it. He'd done the bar scene a bit, didn't want to go back to Germany. A little bit of money in the bank. Jib did inquire, wanted every detail and he had about 3,000 euros left in the bank. Now Jib had already spoken to Lech 
um, about getting an assistant. And why was Jib even getting this job? What had happened? The elders had never told her, but the previous lady that was running these operations for the elders was no longer out and about in Thailand. So hence Jib gets the job. Like anyway, Jib had mentioned to Lek and Lek had told how it was going to work that if she found herself an assistant um, that Lek would take care of visas, work permits, everything, bank accounts, uh, anything things like car insurance and all the rest. So Jib quizzes Junker, he seems fine, absolutely fine. He has a he, he can drive, but he hasn't got a Thai driving license. He's got a small room at the back uh, of Chinatown that he's renting at 5,000 baht a month. So she says to Junker, tells him the job. You're going to be my driver, my chauffeur. You're going to be getting items from shops for me, parceling them, sending the post to them. You're going to run me around wherever I want to go and then you're going to be doing some other driving jobs for me going all over the country could be in return to start she said she would pay him 30,000 baht a month and if it all worked out after a couple of months trial she'll push it up to 50,000 baht a month this German Junker guy who's great English, he can speak really good English. Perfect. Jib explains she'll get him a proper work permit, visas, insurance. She'll put him through his car test in Thailand. She'll get all the relevant licenses, paperwork, everything covered, the whole lot. The perfect job for a foreigner landing in Thailand. But as a chauffeur, a Thai person can do the chauffeuring job. So it's going to have to be some special title to get a visas and work permits. But Lek, Mafia, Godfather, they can do anything. So Junker, of course, he's going to say yes. And Jim says to him, under no circumstances will you and me get involved in a personal level ever. Do not cross that line. Put him straight there and then he appreciated that understood she is his boss so Junker ah, Junker and Jib hmm. he'll be starting immediately the next day she'll make a phone call and she'll get him off to do the driving test and the visas and everything off they go park company next morning Jibs onto Lek, Lek's arranged it, sends the limo, gets to Junker's address, picks him up, takes him back to the house, to Lek's big house. The man husband of Lek, or if his husband is down at the go go bar. And Lek sits Junker down, Lek sits Junker down goes through all paperwork and bits and pieces, gets him to sign all different things, sends him off back in the limo, off to a drive-in test center where it's already been arranged everything that he's gonna pass and get everything. But he's not on the right visa at the moment, but somehow it'll all get done and he'll get his license. Over the next week, he's got his license, he's got paperwork, he's got visas, his passport's taken off, comes back, proper visas, he's got a work permit, everything is taken care of by Lek and he's all covered. The new Honda is ready for collection and Jib informs him that he's going to get this car but she doesn't like the idea of this new car being parked at his room so it's got to stay in Jib's secure parking underneath. This will be a pain for him and she says, maybe I'll move you into my condo. Um, but we'll see how we get on first. Junker's over the moon, he's already on salary. Off he goes, collects the new Honda. It'll be his job to look after that car and keep it clean and 
everything else. I need to live as a Honda, back to Jib's garage underneath the apartments. Mm. We still don't know the business, what's it all about? Is Junker just going to be an employee? Just going and buying the gold and posting it? And it's a lot of salary he's getting just for that and a bit of driving around supermarkets and things for her. Hmm. Intrigued? Then you're going to have to come back next time. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.